Anthropogenic noise can affect marine animals in four main ways. First of all, anthropogenic noise can affect the distribution of animals in aquatic systems. Aquatic animals are specifically adapted to occupy certain spaces within their habitat, but when anthropogenic noise causes a disturbance, this can lead to an avoidance of important breeding and foraging grounds by aquatic life. Anthropogenic noise can also have implications on the reproductive fitness of aquatic organisms. Anthropogenic noise can disrupt their ability to grow and mate in their native habitat, hampering their reproductive fitness. Third, many species of aquatic life rely on sound production to communicate with other members of their species. Anthropogenic noise can interfere with this communication, blunting the sound produced by marine life and even causing them to invest more energy into sound production. Finally, anthropogenic noise can have huge implications on predator-prey interactions in marine environments. Many species rely on auditory cues to detect and avoid predators, but when anthropogenic noise blunts this ability, predators are able to attack prey much more stealthily. Anthropogenic noise can have serious and lethal effects on marine organisms' physiology and behavior. These effects carry over into population dynamics and vulnerability, community structure, and distribution. Individual organisms, populations, communities, and the oceans as a whole are feeling the effects of anthropogenic noise. And despite the need for continued research, effective mitigation strategies can and should be implemented. In terms of mitigation, there are physical techniques that we can use, such as bubble curtains to dampen the noise from underwater construction, and the soft start protocol where noise is slowly increased so as to not shock the animals. There are even propellers on shipping vessels that decrease the amount of sound emitted by 400%. But unless we include these techniques in legislation, making them a requirement, nothing will change. If these animals are protected by the law, they have a chance. The future of mitigation is legislation. We talked to Dr. Alexander Oleskin, a professor with the Department of Biology at Moscow State University, to get her input on the importance of legislation. The first piece of legislation I would focus on would be the required and regular monitoring of the anthropogenic noise source immediately after beginning work, as well as permitting and encouraging universities to be involved in the monitoring of anthropogenic source noise and studying its effects without having to go through the bureaucracy of applying and waiting for approval. The data that would hopefully be collected from this collaboration would help in better understanding the damages of aquatic noise, as well as imposing legislations that would actually mitigate the damage of those effects, rather than enforcing legislation point blank without proper assessment, data, or even evidence to back it up. Why should non-environmentalists care about anthropogenic noise in the ocean at all? To get an expert's opinion, we talked to Kat Nikolic, a PhD student at the University of Victoria. Um, so I find it challenging when people ask me that question because for me, there's no such thing as a non-environmentalist. Everybody is an environmentalist because everybody needs an environment in which to live. We can't exist in a vacuum of space. So even if you don't believe in the intrinsic value of species, or if you don't give a damn about saving the whales, you probably still want air to breathe and water to drink and food to eat. And all of that comes from the environment. It doesn't magically appear. The marine ecosystem is this giant Rube Goldberg machine that we're struggling to understand. And if you take one piece out, be it a whale or a fish or a piece of algae, it can completely and permanently alter everything downstream in ways that we don't understand yet. So over a billion people on this planet depend upon the ocean for their dietary protein requirements. And even if that's not you, that probably includes some of the people that grow your food and sew your clothes and build your cars. No matter where you live or what you eat or how you make a living, people who live in environments that depend upon the ocean directly are environmentalists, whether they know it or not. And in that way, all of us should be. So therefore, everybody should care.